It's a land of huge, old-growth white pine trees. It's a place of big windy lakes and long portages. It's close encounters with the local wildlife. It's Algonquin Provincial Park. Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Brad. Please join us while we journey through Ontario's oldest provincial park as we explore the backcountry. Established in 1893, Algonquin is the province's oldest park. Its immense size means that this is a place where you can really get off the beaten track. It's not uncommon in parts of the interior to be able to paddle for several days without ever seeing another person. With more than 2,100 backcountry campsites linked by over 800 portages, there are plenty of route choices available. But on this particular trek, the goal is to locate some of the few remaining stands of old growth white pine trees that still exist within the heart of this legendary park. Getting to them, however, is part of the adventure. To the north of us, it looks like it's gonna rain. Well, we're still kind of out in the middle of this lake and uh, hopefully it holds off for a bit. Okay, you spoke too soon. Oh, this sucks. Now it's raining. Well, this just whipped up in a couple seconds here. You can see it coming over the ridge. Oh, this is not fun. The journey began with heavy downpours and the never-ending struggle of paddling across large windswept lakes. At times, the constant headwinds made it feel as if there were little or no progress at all. But eventually, the open water soon gave way to sheltered rivers and the wildlife that inhabits them. The animal you're most likely to see in Algonquin Provincial Park is the moose often seen feeding on aquatic vegetation in rivers, ponds, and along the shores of lakes. It's estimated that there are between 3,000 and 4,000 of these large animals within the park boundaries, so your chances of coming across one are quite good. River travel in Algonquin can also mean spending a lot of your time out of your boat, either walking it through shallow sections or on portage trails carrying all your gear around impassable swifts and rapids. Well, here's a part where it gets a little bit interesting. We've come to a point in the river where it shows a 1,200 meter portage. There's a series of rapids down here. So we're gonna play the adventurous duo and try going down the rapids instead of carrying the boat around. Okay, just to the right a bit, right. There's a big rock straight ahead, so go to the left of it. That's good. Go to the left. That's good. That's good. I see one right there to the... Yep. Okay, now go right down the center here. That's good. Right down the center. Nothing in front of us. That's good. Okay. Sharp left. Uh, sharp left. Sure. Extreme left. Extreme left. Whoa, Extreme left. watch the rock. That's good. Extreme left. Okay, if we keep staying to the left here, stay to the left. Watch that rock. Stay to the left. Okay, now over to the right. Right. That's good. That's good. That's good. And back to the left. Okay, back to the left. Yep. Straight okay. through there. Okay. Stay to the left. You see anything? Stay to the left. I see then that extreme rock. right. Okay, that's good. But when two bodies of water aren't linked by a river, you have no choice but to carry all of your gear over land. Unfortunately for Wayne and Brad, their route involves one of the longest portages in Algonquin. Here we go. Almost five kilometers in length. All right, so about uh, 1.5 kilometers into this. It's uh, not too bad, it's pretty narrow, pretty overgrown and pretty steep, but it's hard to see the trails in here at times. It's kind of, the light plays tricks with your eyes and it's not well worn. 
You get kind of into a rhythm after a while with this. It starts to feel like there's no weight on your shoulders at all. Except when you go up hills like this, it is. Slow going, but it's going. After two days of travel covering almost 60 kilometers of canoeing and portaging, we finally come to the beginning of the trail that's, according to the map, supposed to take us up to the old growth forest. Now along this trip in the park, of course, we've seen lots and lots of trees, but the only signs of old trees have been the big stumps on the ground and the few logs that we found scattered about. So hopefully at the end of this trail, we'll find some living examples. The size of that is huge. At last they'd found them, the giant white pine, Ontario's official tree. Let's try tape measure and see how big it is. All right, that's a good idea, actually. Keep it. Okay. So that's 12, that's 12 feet. So that's like three meters. How mighty they looked, stretching skyward to heights of 35 meters. Put into perspective, that's about the size of a 10-story building. It was clear to Wayne now why these giants of the forest were so highly prized for their use as masts in the days when sailing ships ruled the seas. Wow, look at that. It goes way up. I can't even see the top of it. That's how far up it goes. And you know, the thing is, it's hard to imagine that at one point, almost the entire province was covered with trees like this before logging. Until the early 1900s, the white pine industry was the Ontario government's largest source of income, and most of what is now Algonquin Provincial Park was heavily logged. Living in remote camps, loggers spent months cutting down and squaring the giant pine. Come springtime, the harvest of timber was floated along swollen rivers within the park out toward the Ottawa River and the world beyond. Even today, logging still occurs in controlled areas within the park. But it's good to know that these large white pine reside within a wilderness zone and will remain here for future generations to admire. Well, that's our small look at this big park. Please join us the next time as we explore the backcountry. country.